Uh, Nathan McKinnon of the Colorado Avalanche joins us here on 32 Thoughts. Um, what was the most annoying part of your summer? Wasn't too bad, man. I was out east, uh, relaxing, training, yeah. skating. Um, wasn't too bad, honestly. It was uh, it was good. I didn't have to get tested every day like, yeah. during the season, so it was relaxing. Are you at the point now where you can just laugh off all the Zadorov, Zadorov stuff? Yeah, yeah. I didn't really like it at first, honestly. I was like, like I am. I take things seriously, but that portrayal of me, um, you know, people. I feel like nowadays they think the internet is the law you know whatever someone says is true um but obviously there's some truth to everything and um i definitely take it seriously and i was now i laugh at the memes more than i did back then but i was telling you guys earlier my buddies were sending me those memes i was like can you please stop that and i texted z i'm like i'm like bro like why are you talking about me in moscow like <laughs> <laughs> like what like how did I come up? Like you know what I mean? So what I love say? Z, but what's up? What do you say? He's like, bro, I compare you to MJ, you're so nasty or something. Like you, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like MJ. I'm like, I'm MJ without six rings and ten MVPs. Yeah, I'm just like him. Like, Was there not a part of you that just wanted to double down on it and just say, like, yeah, like I'm sorry, I demand excellence. I demand yeah, greatness. For sure. And um, you know, I didn't even want to I was gonna, I was gonna say something about it, but I didn't really even want to give it attention. Don't give it oxygen. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to do that at all. But um, it was a big thing. I mean, it kind of went. I don't have Twitter, but I have Instagram, so I see all the, like the memes and people talking about Instagram and stuff. And I saw some people were like offended, like they were offended, like the way I was, act, like they thought I act or something. So. People are They're pretty sensitive. People are pretty sensitive these days. So yeah, yes, but, they are. I mean, at the end of the day, I think all of us want to be the best, and you know, even if that was true, I mean, who cares? People need to worry about their own lives. I think so. Well, you know, there's something you say here that it's the second time I've heard you say a variation of this thing. It's one of the things I, I'm really interested the most about you is. You just talked about how Zadorov compared you to Michael Jordan, and Michael Jordan has six titles and how many MVPs, so don't compare me to that. And I remember last year at the pause, I asked you something similar about Crosby, and you said, that guy has three Stanley Cups, two Olympic gold medals as MVPs. Like, I won't even put myself in the same sentence. I, I, like, I love that about you. I, like, you have, like, I'll tell you this, when, when Landis Gog resigned, one of your teammates said to me, uh, it's a good thing Gabriel's back because we need him to calm down Nate when <laughs> Nate gets mad at all of us all the time. Yeah. But he said it as a compliment in the sense that you're a driver. You have high standards for yourself and you have high standards for people around you. And I don't think that's ever bad. I don't think that's bad at all. Yeah, I think, honestly, the, that's why the MJ stuff, it's just it's, like I find that so un embarrassing, you know, seeing me compared to someone like that, like you said, like, I mean, I've had been up for a couple of hearts, but like, it doesn't really matter. I don't think, you know, I just want to, you know, have my name on the cup one day. And I think that's what I'm really looking to do. Um, and I think it'll be a big disappointment if we never get that done in Denver. So um, that's all myself, EJ, Gabe, you know, the guys have been there on Miko kill. It's all we really care about. We want to, we want to win. Um, very badly and we're uh, hoping we get that done but uh i definitely yeah i'm definitely glad gabe resigned uh i don't even want to be captain or anything i just want to um you know be who i am and and gabe is like the perfect captain anyways uh very composed uh such a good person selfless he's a perfect captain so so happy he's around for eight more years i want to ask, so while that was going on do you get involved <laughs> uh i try not i i knew it was gonna work out i knew it was gonna work out i think uh it gets emotional you know it's it, people say it's business but it's not it's it's personal i think you know mm -hmm. um but i know joe at the end of the day really wanted to resign gabe um and i know gabe wanted to stay and i knew they figure it out i think at the end of the day joe wasn't letting gabe leave and i know gabe didn't want to leave but um, it's definitely, I was definitely supportive of Gabe staying. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it was very supportive. <laughs> he, he's, uh, I mean, he's one of our favorite players to watch. He's, yeah. he's spectacular. Uh, and sneaky tough too, uh, yeah. as a lot of people are, are, are finding out, uh, how with much does face. he make? What's that? <laughs> They're finding out with their face. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure Braden Shen's yeah. going to think, going to think yeah, twice now, sure. but actually when I, in, when in, in junior, I saw him cause you're a CHL guy. I saw him, yep. um, really as a rookie handed to Jake Muzzin in a Kitchener Sault Ste. Marie oh, Greyhound okay. team. Ask him about that. Okay, I think he was well, a rookie. Someone took a run at one of the Rangers players and yeah. landed. It might have been his first fight. I know who's getting asked about that like, when the Avalanche played Toronto next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he went and Muzzin was like one of the toughest guys in the OHL at that point. And everyone's like, well, Landis guy's going to get it. And he did more than all right. Man child. Yeah. But how much does he make that line work? You know, like you're a rhinoceros out there. Like you're one of those players in the NHL. Like, it must be a nice feeling, like whatever you want to do, you can do, and you go and do it. But how much does Landis Cog make that line work? Yeah, he's he's huge. I think just even defensively, um, a lot of times he'll back check first, and I'm I'll play his wing or whatever. But he's just such a power forward, um, not just for our line, but I mean he's a leader of our team as well. He just kind of makes everything tick, and uh, you know, for Miko, me and Miko kind of, um, you know has an e- easier time when Gabe's on the ice. He does a lot of the dirty yeah. work, goes to the net. Mm-hmm. He's always a net presence. I mean, he's always getting hit with pucks and getting cross-checked in front. He does a lot of the stuff no one wants to do. Um, and Miko does a lot of that too and gives me a lot of room to kind of, um, you know, play a little higher or play on the outside a little bit more and, and chase mm-hmm. down pucks that way. Knowing your very high stance for yourself, what did you think after this year? Like, what did you work on in the summer? Mm-hmm. Like, do you ever do you ever go back and watch the Vegas series or anything like that? No, I don't need to. It was more of a mental thing than a than a actual physical thing. I think for us, and for me too, we got a little hesitant. You know, I think we beat them in game two, but they dominated us in the second and third. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, like, oh, like I remember talking on the plane. I'm like, that's our, you know, we gotta, we we, you know, our whole thing is the process. Like, be good in the process. Results will take care of themselves. Our whole year. That's kind of was our thing. It, and it still is. And the process that game was so bad. But we still won an OT, Miko. Amazing shot in OT. Mm-hmm. But it still felt like, ooh, like we shouldn't have won that game. And then in games three and four, they dominated us. And we got hesitant. Um, you know, our whole thing is being aggressive and, and making plays and being confident and wanting the puck. And no one really wanted the puck. No one wanted to make mistakes. Um, so I'm really hoping, I know actually not hoping, I know we'll learn from that. And, you know, when things get tough, it's the playoffs. Teams are going to have good games, but we got to stop the bleeding a little bit quicker than that. When you say the process, like what's the avalanche's process? Like how does it work? What do you have to follow like for your team? Yeah, well, I think just whether we win or lose, um, I think we're good enough that if we if we play well, we, we're, we are going to win. But if we if we lose playing well, we, uh, we can't get too down on ourselves. But I guess it's just... Um, you know, for us, we like to track, you know, uh, all five guys above their five guys. That's a huge thing for us. When we do that, we're actually way better offensively. We don't get lazy coming back in our zone. Um, we swarm quick in the D zone. Um, you know, we play a little physical. We're not the most physical team. We play fast and aggressive. And when we do that, we're a tough team to beat. Um, but, uh, like, we got on our heels a little bit. Like, all credit to Vegas. They were great. Um, they were buzzing against us, but you know, even in game five, we're up two, two nothing going into the third period, you know, um, just a couple of mistakes, unfortunate mistakes and they tie the game and, and win it in OT. And then in game six, I, I think we outshot them 40 to 20 or something. It was just too late. You know, they had all the momentum on their side, I think. And it's too bad because, you know, when you really think you can win, um, you know, you want it so bad and, and then you don't. It's it's frustrating because I've been on some tough teams in my career and where you don't have a, a even have a chance. So when you do have a chance, you want to make it count, and hopefully this year we can. You know, it's interesting you talk about you know guys not wanting the puck and, and being hesitant. And we've seen teams. Maybe the most obvious example is is Toronto in Game Seven against Montreal. Just freeze, just freeze. Yeah. And and there's nothing like you can't train to no. not freeze. Like there's nothing you can do other than just go through it. And it's a bitter yeah. pill, and it goes down sideways. But you know, is there a part of you and your teammates that just say, you know what, the only way to get past that is to just go through it? 
Yeah, I, I I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's 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 tough. I mean, when you when you really and you are freezing and hesitant because you really want it. You know, that's the thing. It's not yeah. like you don't want to be there. If anything, you'd be, you'd be loose in that situation. But I think you kind of have to go through it. And when you start to feel that again, you know, you remember how to get through it, I guess. And that's not by being hesitant. If anything, double down on your aggressiveness and your assertiveness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And just, yep. I can't let that feeling take over, you know, because I think hesitating is the worst thing you can do in hockey it's such a fast sport um when you get the puck you can't have a negative thought go through your head you know it has to be an assertive thought um a confident feeling and just easier to say that now in an interview in september but um that's what i think our whole team and myself we need to pick up from from last year no you know hang on but that makes a lot of sense to me yeah. like i don't get like overly philosophical about this but you know the minute you're sort of thinking too much you can really talk yourself into bad decisions. It's almost as if you want to just turn your brain off and just let all your mm -hmm. hockey training in your whole life just sort of take over. And, you know, I always, <laughs> and I know we laugh at it sometimes when, you know, you guys are doing a walk-off interview and the interviewer asks you like, hey, what happened in that play? And you say, I don't know. Like, I get that because yeah. I would imagine like, as a player, you're not thinking about it. You're no. just doing it. So legitimately, you don't know what you just did. Yeah, and I think that's why the, you you have to go more by feelings than thoughts, you know, when you're out there, you're feeling confident, you're feeling aggressive and that's it. And then yeah. we've been doing this our whole lives. Just let your instincts take over from there. You'll make plays, you'll make the right, you have to just trust yourself that you'll make the right decision with the puck or the right play by just feeling good and, and being confident and being aggressive. I know I said that word a lot, but I think it's important that we didn't do, I didn't do it at all in games three, four and five mm. or game more games three and four like I was hesitant I didn't want to make mistakes and I remember Joe I mean Joe was like just let go you know I was trying to be play the perfect game or you know not take any risks or anything and that's not my style either so uh it's hard I mean you, you know you don't it's a lot to figure out uh in a short amount of time it's not like you get to the playoffs it's a short window, you know. You got a lot of learning to do on the fly, so it's challenging. Last one, uh, Olympics. Mm -hmm. And uh, the players save this, and I'm sure you played a role. I heard that Sidney Crosby and Connor McDavid did some skating together to try some things. Yep. Did you – have you – skated with anyone or you <laughs> try did I you skate with the other two of them like like i wasn't we, no i could uh, we see a super line there i was against them i was against them and uh wasn't totally fair i don't know why they teamed up like that uh but i actually was with on a line with marner at the same skates and i played with marns at world championships in 2017 mm -hmm. and uh yeah we have some good chem we have some good chem out there so he's I love playing with Marner. He's such a good player, such a good passer. So. Okay. Well, that leaves me. Sorry. I know I got to, but you know Marner. Oh, he went through the ringer. Yeah, he did. Did you give him any advice? Yeah. I mean, I said some words I probably shouldn't say on here to him about it, you know? <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> well, I was just like, he, I mean, we were just like, it wasn't like, oh, here, Marner, sit yeah. down. Like, like who, who might have said anything to anybody? But, you know, from the outside, I just think, he just can't care, you know, he just can't care. Like, that's right. That's right. I mean, it's a, it's a hard league, you know, and what if they win that, then he has six goals and seven games in the next series. You know, it's just, you, you know, one series. I remember when Pittsburgh won the cup, I think it was 16 or 17 cup, like Sid had two assists in seven games against Washington. They beat, and they beat Washington. It's a team sport, you know, and Sid won the con smite that year. He didn't score a goal in, against Washington. So for Marins, I mean, he's just got to keep going. He was, uh, I think people forget he was like, wasn't he like the first team all-star in the NHL this year? So it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, it's it sucks the way he was ripped. You know, people coming after his family and stuff. It's pretty pathetic. But, um, you know, he's going to bounce back. He's such a positive guy. He's a fun guy to be around. And um he really, he's a fun, really fun guy to be around. He's funny and likes to have a good time and he's such an amazing player. So Toronto's definitely lucky to have him. Okay, last one for me. And I'm going to be totally selfish oh, about oh, this. Go. I know. Uh, it's my fault. Okay, I'm going to be totally selfish. Okay. But it was one of the best goals I was ever at a rink to see live. Okay. 
<laughs> Team North America, Team Sweden, you score, and Henrik Lundqvist walk us through it. Yeah. Um, I probably should have back-checked right before I scored, but <laughs> I was kind of puck-watching there. I saw Johnny Hockey had a step there, so I was like, ah, oh, it might come to me. Uh, probably a little tired. Uh, yeah, man, that was my favorite goal I've ever scored for sure. It didn't mean as much as we all thought it did. We were celebrating like – So cool. Oh, yeah, we were – so we all so young and I mean Matthews didn't even play a game in the league yet on that team so it was great I saw it was five years ago the other day which is wild yeah um but yeah that's you know I did just, you know what you're gonna do going in no I just started like stick handling quick and then <laughs> I saw the stick come out that's what I mean it's those, those are instincts I wasn't thinking about a toe drag you know so that's awesome really cool yeah uh thanks so much for this best of luck this year at the abs and Olympics yeah thank you so much appreciate it guys thanks a lot Nathan yeah for that's sure great.